am officially in Lisbon, Portugal, and I immediately see a Starbucks here. So I'm going to grab a cup of coffee. I already got my bag from baggage claim. So I am going to order an Uber and head to my hotel. I'm hoping that I can check in early, but overall the flight was very good, you guys. I left at 8.30 p.m. from Newark. It was a nonstop flight. It was like six and a half hours, I believe. They gave us two full meals. They provided like these small pillows, like kind of like fake head pillows and a light blanket, but it was a little uncomfortable, but what are you gonna do? You know, it wasn't a full flight, so I had a lot of space. I had a whole road to myself, um, but it went by quick because it was overnight, so I slept like I normally would have anyway, you know? So I'm here now. I'm super, super excited. I'm gonna chat more with you guys about this being my first solo trip once I get to the airport, but first I'm gonna grab a cup of coffee and get this Uber. All right, you guys, so it turns out that the Uber was like on the other side of the airport and it looked very difficult to get to. So I'm going to try my hand at the Metro. It was right next to like the arrivals. So it looked pretty convenient and I saw a lot of people coming this way. So I just got a ticket, like a one-way ticket basically. Um, to the downtown area where I'm staying um, and I looked at the map already and it looks like it's only two blocks away from my hotel so we're gonna try it <laughs> you know I'm willing to learn so let's try the metro how do I do this <laughs> oh, thank you So I'm looking at my map. Looks like it's only a six minute walk. All right, let's do this, keep going. Few more sets, few more sets. Ooh. Portugal is super pretty, you guys, but these cobblestone streets are killing me. The poor wheels on my suitcase, like, <laughs> struggling, but super cool. I'm loving it. So many little alleys with like restaurants and stuff on them. Definitely gonna be out here. It says it's right here. Oh, here it is. How do I get in this? You can't really see the name really well, but it's it's right there. B Hotel Lisboa, something like that, but it was hidden. It was this restaurant. Okay, let's go check in. I'm just gonna look around. <laughs> Oh, this is that restaurant, I guess, that feeds out to the outside. Definitely gonna be eating there. Breakfast room. Breakfast room, I guess, is that door. Little seating space. Computer. To work in, I guess. Nice. So it looks like there's five floors, so I'm on the third floor. Okay. Dang, that seemed like more than three floors. <laughs> in the room here it looks like there's a full-length mirror hey guys welcome to Lisbon Portugal I'm so excited to be here 
Okay, so it looks like right next to the mirror is the bathroom. So kind of right when you walk in the room. This is so cool. The toilets here are very like, like small and it seems like energy saving or something. I noticed that at the airport. Shower is cool. I like the color. It looks very clean in here. Um, little sink. And then we have some good natural lighting in here and a view of the street, it looks like. Well, you can't really see it too well, but I can kind of see down there. There we go, yeah. Okay, so nice, nice, nice. I'm liking it so far. Now let's come back out here. We have mini bar. She said that this is not included, so there is a fee with the mini bar, so we'll stay away from that. Um, looks like a coffee maker here. I don't know what this is. Cocktail dressing sauce, I don't know. Okay, for my chicken. So then we come here into the room. So it is a superior room with a double bed. It, the superior rooms come either with one double or two twin beds. So I got the double since I am so low. Got some views, views. Nice LED TV on the wall. There is a complimentary bottle of water that she said comes with the room. And then I am a VIP guest from my booking. So they gave me a bottle of wine on the house. Okay, I will definitely be drinking that just because we are in a country that loves wine. So telephone next to the bed. Bed looks super crisp. I like it. And then here is the views. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, let me not drop my camera. This is exactly what I wanted. I wanted a room that has views of the streets. There's the restaurant down there. She said I get 20% off of the restaurant during my stay. Breakfast is included, so I get breakfast every day delivered to my room but the restaurant is not included. I love the balcony aesthetic of countries like Spain and Portugal. You know what I'm talking about? Like everyone has a balcony. You kind of look over into the street. There's restaurants and like, you know, things happening in the streets that you can just observe. I love that. I don't even know what to do right now. There's like so much stuff I want to go look at and explore. And like, it's early still. It's only 11.32 AM. So I still feel like I have a full day ahead of me so i think i'm gonna change and then go explore what's in like the near vicinity to me like just on these few side streets i saw a lot of cool like monuments and statues and stuff like that and then i just kind of want to get my bearings and plan out my days because i do not like to freestyle and the best part is is that i'm here for so long like eight days seven nights that's so much time for me to do stuff and really make a cool itinerary i do not like to freestyle my vacation itinerary you guys anybody who's traveled with me knows that i plan it out well in advance i know what i'm going to be doing pretty much every day and so this is new for me being that I didn't really have time to put together a full itinerary of like my day-to-day -day activities for portugal so i'm going to have to do that today because i don't want to just be wandering around like oh what am i going to do today oh let's go here for a day trip let's go there you know mm -mm, no especially like i don't even speak portuguese i don't know where i'm going so yeah and this is my first solo trip you guys i don't know if i said that yet but i have never taken a solo trip before. I've always traveled with at least one person. So this is all super new for me. And I chose the beautiful country of Portugal for my first ever solo trip because it's consistently rated in the top countries for solo travelers. And I've just heard, you know, from personal experiences from friends that they felt very comfortable traveling to Portugal by themselves for a solo trip. So I figured it would be a great first trip. Um, and by far, I'm very satisfied. Oh my Oh my gosh, you guys, I didn't even realize this, but if I slide this door over, it's like the closet over here. And there's like two big things, a safe, hangers, it looks like more pillows, a big wool blanket. Amazing. I was wondering like where is some closet space because I want to actually unpack all my clothes because I'm here for like over a week. 
so that is like what I consider a long-term stay so I definitely am going to fill out the closet just to make it easier so I don't feel like I'm living out of a suitcase and the room is kind of small you know like the the streets of Portugal are like very small I'm noticing and like the buildings are all very like compact so I was wondering where the space was so very very efficient setup of a room like everything seems to have its place all right guys issue number one I'm seeing these all over the room so I'm going to take an educated guess that those are the outlets and I don't have that adapter so yeah that might be pit stop number one is getting one of those I'm gonna check with the front desk to see if they complimentary have one that I can borrow or something but that's probably something I should have looked up in advance so just know that Portugal does not have the same ports outlets as the US so bring an adapter so I found another interesting thing about this room she mentioned at the check-in that oh I'm gonna give you a second key for power I had no idea what she was talking about so I just bypassed it but now that I got in the room I found this it says literally says insert card for power so I guess this is what she was talking about when I put the key in all the lights just came on in the room so I guess that's what she meant so you need a key for power guys okay so the front desk said that they actually don't have a plug like the two prong they brought up earlier a three prong but it wasn't the three prong that we're used to it was curved differently so i'm gonna have to find somewhere to pick up a plug they said that there's a store here somewhere that might sell them so i'm looking for it right now hello do you sell um plug adapters oh right here okay let's see uh, it's okay. <laughs> thank you have a good day I do not know why he gave me a hundred coins back like I guess he was trying to get rid of his pennies but <laughs> he said disculpe uh sir please can you give me bills like what the heck but i'm going up the street i looked on google maps i found a really cute italian restaurant it looked like right up the street from my hotel so i think i'm gonna go there for dinner um so we're gonna try to find it nice <laughs> i'm actually coming here uh, oh they have a lot of spaghetti okay this is definitely it got some good bread you guys I don't know what this is, but let's try it. Pretty good. All right, guys, here's my first meal in Portugal. I have some shrimp pesto. I still have all that bread over there, you guys. I don't know how I'm gonna eat it all myself, but let's give it a try. Mm, 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 mm. So good. I already know I'm going to eat so much on this trip you guys everything I've tasted thus far in Portugal has been amazing so yeah I'm gonna come back a few pounds in here all right guys so here is my total for dinner it's 1825 there so when I type that in over here it's the equivalent of about $20 20 US dollars I also gave a two euro dollar tip so, what would that be? 20, 25, so $22. Pretty comparable. That restaurant was really good, you guys. It was a great first pick. Go me. Um, so like I said, it's about $22. That's pretty equivalent to like what I would spend in the States. So for right now, I want to kind of just check out the local vicinity around here. Um, I saw that there's a McDonald's up the street and there's also a Starbucks on a close block here. So I kind of just want to get my bearings and see what's right around kind of my hotel just so that... I could, you know, in the morning go walk and get a cup of coffee or kind of know what's around me or I've seen that before or something like that, you know? Oh, wow, this looks like a testing center for COVID, which is amazing because I will have to get a COVID test in order to get back in the States within a day. So good to know that that's right there. All right, I see the big M's. I see the McDonald's over there. I don't know if you guys can see, but right over there, 
where the, those cars are going down that street, there's a Burger King on that corner. So, yay, we love international franchises. All right, guys, back in the room. So I had a really great server at the restaurant. He was actually from Brazil. He just moved here six months ago. Crazy, right? Um, but anyway, like I might wanna move here too. So he gave me a lot of great recommendations for things to do around Lisbon. He showed me a lot of um, sightseeing spots on Google. So he, he legit typed it in my phone and was like, here, you should go here, you should go here. These are really great views. Um, he said he hasn't really got out of Lisbon since he's been here to explore other cities, Porto, Faro, um, places that I'm interested in going. So his um, kind of insight into that was a little limited, but I wrote down all of the great places that he recommended. So I think I'm going to do those things tomorrow. Just stick around Lisbon and go see like the sites that he recommended and see what other kind of attractions Lisbon has that I can kind of jam pack into tomorrow so that's gonna be the plan I am going to shower um, get some more rest <laughs> don't judge me um, and then kind of map out my day for tomorrow but I'm very very excited because this is kind of like a, a travel day a rest relax type of day so tomorrow we're gonna get into the thick of Lisbon and the sights and views of Portugal so see you guys soon good news you guys the adapter works it's charging so nice little seven dollar pickup good morning friends so it is our first official full day in lisbon portugal it is about 8 a.m and they just delivered my breakfast so when i booked this hotel i paid a little bit extra to get breakfast included just because i felt like i could eat lunch or dinner out while i'm exploring but breakfast i just wanted to make sure that i'd have it every day so they just delivered my breakfast. I'll show you guys what I'm eating. So it looks like we have some coffee, some juice, um, some assorted fruit, and then this is the custard. They also gave me one when I checked in, so I guess that's like a delicacy here. It looks like some pastries and bread, and this looks like maybe sandwiches. Is that cheese and turkey, or maybe cheese and ham? Uh, maybe cheese and turkey, or cheese and ham. So, pretty good little spreads. All right, third time's a charm, guys. There we go, success. Okay, so the gold one, the gold one is the coffee. Good to know. Mmm, that is good. It's like very strong. It's like a, it's kind of like a, what is that? Like a um, cappuccino kind of? Ooh. all right guys so i am ready to go i am wearing a nice kind of like little sweater dress because it is chilly here in portugal so it's about like high 50s low 60s it's still in the morning the sun's going to continue to go up but it's not hot hot weather so kind of dress warm be prepared to be a little chilly especially if you're coming from a warmer climate so i have like a little pocketbook with my phone and some money i have my list of touristy sites and sightseeing places that i want to go i kind of grouped them by geographic location so that i can hit all the ones in one vicinity and then move on to the next part of the city um, and then i have a bag here i have a jacket in there i have my tripod um, as well as like another external charger just so that I'm prepared for the day of like filming and content creation and stuff like that So very excited. Um, so Let's go. Let's go explore Lisbon. Wait, Lisbon, Lisbon, Lisbon. It always makes me think of um, Money Heist, the girl, you know, the professor's wife or girlfriend or whatever, Lisbon. So I have to think about it every time I say it because I want to say Lisbon so bad, but it's Lisbon. Lisbon, Lisbon, Lisbon. Let's go explore Lisbon. So I've already run into the Starbucks. This looks like the Starbucks I was at last night. And look, right there is our first stop, you guys. So this is the elevator of St. Justo or something like that. Elevador to say they soon to Justo or something. Which is wild because I was legit on this block last night. Like that is the Starbucks that I came to last night after dinner. So if I would have just looked right, I would have seen literally like one of the major attractions here in Lisbon. So 
so funny, but it's beautiful, you guys. Like, I guess it's a big elevator. I don't know if they used to use this in the past or something, but look at how big it is. It goes all the way up. I love the colors of like the houses and the buildings, but these hills, whoo! <laughs> Thank God I wore sneakers, you guys. One thing that I did see here was in the square, the Rocio Square with the fountain and the, the monuments. <laughs> Hard to figure out which one that is, right, with all the monuments here in Lisbon. But anyway, so in the Rocio Square, there's actually free tours. Um, it's called Free Tours Lisbon, I think. Um, but they're giving out free tours and I see, I've seen them around the city, but there's groups of natives who give free tours of the city. I'm assuming maybe it's just tip based or whatever, but they are free. No compensation required or anything like that. I considered doing one of those for today, like to kind of like have a guided tour around Lisbon, but I figured I kind of like to do my own freestyle and kind of come and go as I please. And I didn't want to be tied to a group because they do stop at each attraction and kind of give the history and background. So I like to be on the go. I don't want to sit through, you know, the lectures and stuff like that. Although very, very, interesting and important the history aspect I want to get my pictures I want to look around and then go because I want to see a lot of the city so I think it's a great option if you kind of want to just stay in this vicinity and learn more in-depth history about each attraction but if you kind of want to see a, as much as you can of Lisbon in a limited time then like I'm gonna freestyle it so so this is a train car you guys it's called the Elevador de Gloria and it goes to the top here of the hill and goes up to like a, a artsy district it says there's like a gallery an art gallery up there it also leads up to one of the uh over overlooks the viewpoints so i think i'm gonna hop on this I did not even expect to take that. <laughs> that was just something I found, but really, really cool. And it got me to where I want to go because it's right up here next to the next attraction. So super cool. All right, you guys. So there's the train car right here. And then right up these steps is our first Miradora of Lisbon. So Miradoras translates to like viewpoints or like we call them overlooks sometimes in the States. So kind of viewpoints where you can see over the city. So there's various Miradoras all over the city. So my goal is to reach all of them or if not all of them, a lot of them today. So we are at our first one. Look at this, you guys. Oh my goodness. This is gorgeous. Look at all the roofs. You can see over a lot of the city. Wow, let's go over here. Got more monuments. We got artists. Square. It's giving Central Park vibes. This is stunning. All right, now we gotta go to the Parque de, de Eduardo the Seventh. He sounds important. All right, so this one's a little far. Let me see if it's walking distance or if I should hop on a metro. Seventh, oh my gosh, it's a mile away. I don't know if I could do it. It's a long way. But there's a metro right here and there's a metro at the park. So I think I'll hop on that. The metro is only 150. Um, one way so I think that that's worth it I don't want to start sweating in this dress yeah let's jump on the metro I'm getting the hang of this metro thing that was actually pretty smooth two stops got me right to where I wanted to go I'm merging here at the stop and we're gonna go see Eduardo the seventh so let's find this guy 
I think there's a protest going on over there. You guys can hear like the horns blowing and there's some men holding signs. I don't know what they're protesting. I'm all for the fight though. Let's go Portugal. Let's go Portugal. I don't know, are those apartments? It looks like apartment buildings or lofts. I gotta check out how much those run for because I might need to move here. Beautiful buildings, the colors, the greenery. Oh, you guys, I'm in love. prices you guys manicure six euros that's probably about seven or eight dollars pedicure 15 I don't know what this stuff means but it's cheap United States get your act together all right guys I had to come back to the room because I forgot the freaking external charger it's here charging so that did me no good <laughs> and my phone was legit on like 13 percent um which i was not willing to risk it going to the next site um especially because like i said there's like four of those miradoro so i know i'm going to want my phone for content um and i also use my phone for maps like to navigate the metro and to figure out which streets i'm walking on and stuff so not willing to risk it just came back i'm also going to do an outfit change because like i said it's getting pretty warm it kind of feels like that early fall late summer weather where the mornings and evenings get pretty chilly but the daytime is like hot it's like that and it it makes you not know what to wear right like you want to wear a jacket in the morning but then it gets too hot for the jacket during the afternoon so that's how i'm feeling right now so i'm going to do a quick outfit change into something more summer weather like all right guys i don't see an elevator so it looks like i have taken these steps to the top oh there is an elevator i wonder if i have to pay for that let me go check <laughs> from all over the world in Portugal like it is the real melting pot I've met people from Brazil and South America the United States the UK um, Russia Italy like everywhere you guys so it is definitely a diverse country um, and I like seeing that different a lot of different people represented here and I love that all right guys, this is the first one today that has a fee, like a ticket fee, but I'm willing to pay it because I climbed this hill, so. I guess I scan my ticket here. What? What does that mean? I'm not understanding. <laughs> that security guard just looked at me like I was the dumbest person in the world, but it's okay. <laughs> so this is Castello de Jorge. Castello de Saint Jorge. So another saint. Portugal is a very religious country. I would love to see it in the morning. Like the sun is setting now, but I'd love to see it with like the sunrise. Uh, look at this. Peacock. Oh my gosh. Is it mating season or something? Like, what's going on? Uh, don't shit on me, please. Please don't shit on me. Why do they come back? Like, why are they obsessed with her? How does it feel to be the the it girl <laughs> oh and there's another one okay this must be a peacock sanctuary or something is dancing 
This one, they're all dancing. It must be like mating season or something. All right guys, so this is by far my favorite kind of sightseeing thing activity of the day today. So this is the um, Castle de Saint Jorge or the Miraduro de Saint Jorge. Um, it was really, really cool. Like I had to pay the 10 euros to get in. I did it online, very easy. And then I just scanned my barcode to get in, but it's, there's a lot to do here. Like they have the peacocks that are doing their their thing over there, but are really beautiful. They have um, the overlooks, obviously, which are amazing for pictures. Um, there's also some like little restaurant type things here, like concessions in the castle. So, and then they have like exhibitions and stuff inside that you can go in and check it out. So definitely worth the money. The views alone are worth the money, but by far my favorite site today. Um, I was overly ambitious. I thought I was going to get to a lot more than I did. I did get to a lot, but there's still pretty much half a city that I didn't see. So I'm going to have to take another day to do the other half of the sightseeing that I wanted to do. But I did knock out the Miradoros today, as well as kind of the park and that stuff uptown. So got to go to the other side tomorrow, but I'm still starving, you guys. I haven't eaten anything except for that breakfast this morning. So I truly am going to go get some food now. And I don't know if I showed you guys my second fit of the day, but I just have a black cami on, lightweight overshirt. I have these nice high-waisted pants, really comfortable. Um, my bag with my necessities in, my important stuff, and then the bag with the tripod. I also have my jean jacket in here. But traveling light today saved my life, you guys. Like, only the necessities in here and the front of my person so that, you know, safe and not able to get stolen from and then only the tripod and a jacket if i get cold in here so traveling with only what i needed really saved the day because the more you have to carry the more exhausting the day is when you're going on multiple excursions and sites and traveling all over the city so travel light only the necessities wow guys i hit my move goal today that's like 800 calories <laughs> like i'm literally like cramping up like i have a cramp in like my lower stomach i'm just i gotta find food i'm like breaking down my organs are shutting down i've i've been moving a lot today though like i've really trekked probably a good four miles if i had to guess there's a restaurant up here that's really highly rated so i'm going to go up another hill to get there okay this is what i'm gonna eat guys <sighs> so hungry never mind not eating there the chef doesn't come till seven like for dinner um and that was a disaster for trying to communicate i don't know any portuguese and i thought maybe the spanish that i do know would be helpful but no um so yeah figuring that out me and sir man trying to communicate that was was quite fun so you guys i swear i keep trying to eat and like every single thing is going wrong like i don't know why i can't just get some sustenance but i had heard that like countries like spain and portugal do these things where they like close at various times of the day for like rest or like for like a break to break it up so i'm finding that all of the restaurants right now are like closed in between i guess lunch and dinner so the restaurants are closed right now and don't reopen until like the evening for dinner so it's 5 42 and all of the restaurants are like closed until like 6 30 or 7 30 when i guess they transition over to dinner so i can't find like any food to like sit down and eat right now so what i think i'm gonna do we are going to make lemonade out of these lemons and i think i'm going to grab some quick mcdonald's and see how it is in this country and just get a bite to eat and then go eat like in an hour or two hours and the restaurants are open for actual dinner so the mcdonald's is right over the square so that's what i think we're gonna do so it gives me an excuse to try the mcdonald's Shh, don't tell anyone okay guys this is mcdonald's seating area so i'm just gonna take my food here all right so i got the rustic chicken sandwich looks pretty good it has ketchup on it which isn't my first preference for like a chicken sandwich would have rather like some mayo or something but i probably should have selected that <sighs> i 
feel the soda filling up each of my cells in my body. mayo on it <laughs> I can do with the mayo and ketchup combo it's good. well y'all I cleared that up it's not even a crumb for the pigeons oh here's one give that to the pigeons you guys dinner just did not happen once I got here in the room and got comfortable turned on the TV did my FaceTime calls to my family and friends it was over it's over you know I'm not going back out my stomach is already rumbling but I'm just gonna sleep through it cuz I'm tired I considered like going out to like the McDonald's again <laughs> or like the mini mart or some like restaurant that's local right here on the street but I was just like I can't even will myself up to put on like a pair of pants to go outside so very tiring day you guys like I wish I can see how many steps I did I don't know but I burned over like 1100 calories i set like a move record on my apple watch like never had i moved that much in the history of my apple watch which is crazy like to think that i've gone to the gym before and stuff but today i moved more than any other time like crazy goes to show how much i was doing today you guys i was really moving around this city so i can't believe i only finished like half of it but i'm mapping out the rest of the itinerary for um, the other days, like including the rest of Lisbon that I wanna see, as well as the day trips to Porto. I wanna do a day trip to, I think it's called Faro. Um, and then I got a message on Instagram from a friend who's been to Portugal before who recommends doing a day trip to Sintra. So I looked it up and it looks gorgeous. So that also is getting added in the itinerary. So that's the perk of being here you know eight days is that nothing's rushed like I have the time in my schedule to put those things in the itinerary and be like okay like let's go Friday or Saturday or Sunday or Monday so it, it leaves a lot of room to do and see a lot more which a country like Portugal which has many cities that are beautiful that you would want to see it's like perfect for that longer stay because although Lisbon is gorgeous and there's I've already seen so much in one day there's so many other cities that are even more or just as gorgeous you know so it's like I want to see all of that so this is like the perfect trip thus far and I'm very excited that I still have about five days left because we're gonna see more so I'll catch up with you guys in the morning. I want to go grab some coffee in the morning maybe, um, like at an actual cafe, although I loved the breakfast here. Um, tomorrow I want to make sure I eat a bigger breakfast, being that today I didn't get to eat until later in the day and I started to get a little hangry. So tomorrow I'm going to eat not only the breakfast here, but I'm going to go out to a cafe and get some breakfast. So I will see you guys in the morning. For my second day in Lisbon, today I'm going with jeans, a nice top for photos. Um, I have my bag here, same thing. I have a sweater in here, cardigan sweater, and my tripod. My, I brought my external charger today. I have my pouch of necessities. Today I'm leaving my passport in the safe in the room, so no need to carry that around. Just a little bit of money, um, extra batteries for my camera my cell phone in my front pocket, not my back pocket, don't get pickpocketed, and my mask. So that's it. We are headed out to explore the other half of Lisbon that we didn't get to get to yesterday. So let's go. But just for our bearings here, that's the Rua Augusta Street that we just came through. So that's the arch. Here's like the square right here is the water and I am staying on the street right next to Rua Augusta Do Dos Corrieros or something like that like where I'm staying is pristine location like everything is in walking distance like of course give or take how much you want to walk but everything has been very walkable and easy to get to and if you don't want to walk you see there's so many people on scooters bikes motorized bikes um, there's the little tuk tuk whatever cars they are huh? the little people that drive you around so there's uber here i haven't had to take an uber yet but um just because i'd rather spend less money if i can walk or metro and you have the metro so 
All of that to say, everything's very accessible in this neighborhood that I'm staying in, in the Bianca neighborhood. So, highly, highly recommend. Hello. Hello. <laughs> This bridge is called the Ponte 25 de Abril. So the 25th of April bridge. Never heard a bridge named like that, but love April. I'm an Aries, Aries gang. Got a scooter, guys. It's so much more efficient to get around, you guys. But drive with two hands, be safe. Oh, we got a lot of fishermen fishing off the, the pier. All right, guys, so this is the Padrão dos Descobrimentos. No idea what that means. Father of the disciples, maybe? That's my guess. Oh my God, someone please tell me I'm right. That would be amazing. I'm Portuguese now. Father of the disciples, that just sounds correct, right? It just makes sense, right? Like this is a super religious country. Father, like God, Father, Jesus. Is the disciples, those look like disciples, maybe the 12, I think there's 12 of them, right? 12 disciples, it looks like a bunch of men that like worship God. Y'all, if I'm right, I'm, I'm done. Like put me on jeopardy now. Okay, I'm counting them and that looks like more than 12 men. So I might be wrong, but still like, if I'm not right, then that was a great guess. So I'm still pretty proud. Um, but yeah, I gotta find out who Padre de Descobrimentos is. <laughs> All right guys, we are pulling up at the next attraction, but I wanted to show you this really quick. So they have these little bathroom pods, right? But you put in change to get the door to open. This one's out of service, so I can't go in and show you. Um, but it's basically like a porter potty for money. <laughs> Here we are at the next stop. Oh my gosh, this looks like a dream right now. It's giving proposal, like, with the castle, the violinist, like, I gotta tell my sister. Imagine being the kid at school that's like, oh, I live in the Tower of Belém. Like, where do y'all live? Which neighborhood do y'all live in? Must be nice, you know? Everything is moving, y'all. Everything is moving. All right guys, I am headed out to dinner. I am just gonna go right up the street to a restaurant that I found on Google Maps. I'm feeling a little tired already. It is 7.30, but I'm still recovering from yesterday and then I walked again today, so I'm staying around here and just gonna try our local restaurant. This one is for Momentazo. It has a little bit more alcohol in it. Oh gosh. <laughs> Thirteen and a half, actually. It's not really. Mmm. What's that too? There's a little bit more personality. Mm-hmm. To it. So, can we go higher, or should we stay around here? I'll try uh, one more. All right. So this is going more south. We are going okay. south. Okay. Even further now. We succeed. That has a it's lot of flavor. <laughs> it's so, good though. Is it your tasting? Um, I like the first one. The first one? <laughs> All right. I just wanted to try them, but they are delicious. There's the meal, guys. All right, guys, and last but not least, we have dessert. The food was so good, you guys, like, so good. I ate everything, like 
every single thing off my plate. The appetizer, the entree, the dessert, which I wasn't even gonna get dessert. I was gonna go to like one of these little shops to get a dessert, but my server was just so nice and he was recommending everything and everything he recommended was good. So I was like, I'm gonna trust him on this dessert. And he said it was called White Pearls. He didn't really explain what White Pearls were, was, but I looked it up and I think it was like tapioca, like little tiramisu, but in a bed of tapioca pudding or something. I don't know, but it was delicious. Um, I also had one glass of wine, which was more than enough because I'm a little tipsy. I don't know what kind of wine they serve in Portugal, but it is strong. Um, but also my tolerance is like at all time low, like I'm getting older and all of that. But anyway, 10 out of 10, like 10 out of 10. So it was called Sao Sebastian or something like that. It's in the Hotel de Biaxa. It's in that hotel. It's the restaurant in that hotel. Um, so 10 out of 10 recommend fun fact. I was actually gonna stay at that hotel, but I chose my Hotel B Hotel Lisboa instead, um, which is right here, right next door to it. Um, but yeah, 10 out of 10 recommend. So I'm about to go inside and get ready for bed and watch probably this week's episode of this is us because i missed out on it and pack it up because i'm a little tired so i will catch y'all in the morning oh i forgot to say you guys that meal costed me about 51 80 euros which worked itself out to be like 60 us dollars so that was definitely more on the pricey end so you know i definitely paid for the quality it was really good the service was really really good um so yeah but obviously there's i'm sure much cheaper alternatives in the area but of course i picked something whatever but still like it wasn't that that bad and i still recommend so just budget for how you want to spend money okay good night good morning guys so it is friday is it friday yes it's Friday, February 4th, so it's Friday morning. Um, I woke up, I ate breakfast in the hotel room, so I had just the same thing I've been having every day. Um, coffee, juice. Today's a chill day, you guys. The weather is not good, so like it's very overcast, it's very cloudy, so I decided that I'm kind of just gonna do a chill day and stay in the local vicinity. I want to go to like a supermarket or some sort of like grocery store or something and get some things for my mini fridge i don't have a microwave in my room however i do have a mini fridge so i want to get like water and juice and things like that because they have the mini bar in the room but it's an extra charge and i finished up the free water and stuff so i just need things to drink and little snacks and stuff for the room when i'm there coming and going you know so i want to get some like grocery store stuff because it's probably cheaper i just finished eating um at a little cafe I just came from it a little coffee shop so good you guys it was so good that I forgot to like totally show you guys so I'm gonna put up a picture so you guys can see I had some like blueberry bread a latte and some orange juice the orange juice here in Portugal is different you guys it is just so fresh and good like not no Tropicana over here so it was really really good so now I'm just gonna find that supermarket and then just chill today maybe go in a few shops see what the the clothes and shoes and stuff are looking like because there's a lot of shopping in this vicinity so chill day you guys today okay you guys i found this little shop i found this little boutique like this little shop and why do i like love this jacket this like pea coat and it's only 29.99 euros which is 33 us dollars like you cannot find a jacket like this for 33 dollars in the united states like it's just not possible and it's very thick like the material is really good so am i gonna try it on absolutely i'm not sold on buying it yet because i did not come to portugal to shop however it is quite chilly out here you know like i didn't really bring a heavy jacket so that might be my excuse it's like a pea coat it's like pea coat style, very thick. It looks really good with this jacket, I feel like. I don't know, you guys. It's super cute and I don't have anything like this at home in this color. So, and I definitely cannot get 
something like this in the state for this price. So I think I'm gonna do it. Okay guys, I did it. I got the coat. She asked me, do I need a bag? And I was like, no, I'm gonna wear it right now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Enjoy. Well, we cleared that right up. Okay guys, so I didn't get out for dinner, so McDonald's it is. I just did a McDonald's run. It's literally two blocks up the street. Like I didn't realize how close it really was until I just made the walk now. It's directly straight up two blocks from my hotel. Like the most convenient thing in the world. Um, so I just got like two snack wraps and a small fry. Just a little something to get some food in my stomach because last night I went to sleep hungry and I was miserable. So we're not doing that again. Um, I also wanted to pick up some waters. I got some water and some iced tea from the corner store earlier today but i wanted some water specifically for tomorrow so you guys i'm doing my day trip to porto tomorrow so i bought my train ticket a little earlier and the weather looks like it's going to be nice so tomorrow is the day trip so that's why i went and got those waters at mcdonald's as well so really really important you guys because i literally got screwed i booked my train ticket through a third party website it was called rail ninja it's kind of like a comprehensive catch-all third party booking site like an expedia because it does trains through many different continent many different countries and it's it's very easy to use i did not know that it wasn't the direct site for the train like the portugal train system until after i booked so basically what happened was i looked up like trains to porto portugal from lisbon and it's one of the first sites that came up and i didn't know any better you know so it's definitely a lesson but i booked through the site so it was 106 euros that's about 120 us dollars round trip from lisbon to porto um tomorrow didn't think anything of it they sent me the tickets about 30 minutes later and it was a pdf of my tickets with a qr code but the ticket was from the direct train system here in portugal so it was a different kind of company and i was like wait hold on and what really got me was that it had the price of the real ticket like the direct ticket through the the train system like the the actual rail um and the price was a fraction of what i paid on rail ninja and i legit paid 50 dollars more for the rail ninja ticket than if i would have booked direct through the portugal train rail so it's definitely a lesson learned you don't know what you don't know when you are traveling especially somewhere for the first time and this could happen both domestically in your home country or internationally so definitely research do your due diligence you guys that could have easily been avoided had i probably not been in a rush to book my tickets and done it in advance and maybe looked a little more online but my lesson is learned. I can't refund the ticket being that it's so soon. So that's that. I'm not saying that Rail Ninja isn't a good website to use or a good resource to use for your travels um, throughout the different continents. I'm just saying that definitely do your due diligence and looking direct with the rail system um, to see if the, the ticket price is comparable, if it's worth using Rail Ninja, or if you want to just book direct. So I'm going to eat my McDonald's, you guys, and head to bed because I have to be up super early. My train from Lisbon leaves at 7 a.m. and I want to arrive at the train station early because I also have to go about two miles to the train station so probably get on a scooter the quickest and easiest thing to do. I am also going to be doing a separate vlog for my day in Porto, Portugal so I'll link it above. I'll also link it in the description box but I feel like Porto deserves a vlog for itself. There's probably going to be so much to see. I booked an Airbnb experience um, that is a Harry Potter themed walking tour. So fun fact you guys, JK Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter series, lived in Porto for two years and there's a lot of sites in Porto that they say and it is rumored that inspired 
some of JK Rowling's Harry Potter sites in the book. So very, very interesting. So there is this Airbnb experience with a guide. Um, he's a Harry Potter fan and he walks you around the city and looks at all those sites and gives you the history of Porto and the background of Harry Potter and how they're inter, you know, they intersect. So as a Harry Potter fan, I am, I'm up in arms about this. So all of that to say, I'm going to be doing a Porto vlog separately check that out and then i will check back in with you guys here in this vlog at the end of the day tomorrow so see you guys tomorrow all right gang so i am back from my day trip to porto it was an extremely long day you guys such a long day i woke up at 5 30 i got back to my hotel here at 10 30 p.m so like crazy long day and what is it sick over six hours of travel time on the high-speed train so I thought that the trip was worth it I had some mishaps I missed my train stop had to take an uber pay for an uber almost was late and missed my Harry Potter tour of Porto the hills in Porto are crazy I thought Lisbon was bad. Porto is a different level of hilly, steep mountainside, you guys. But overall, I thought it was great to experience a second city here in Portugal. Be sure you guys check out the vlog of my day trip to Porto to see more of the details and the ins and outs. But I'm glad I went. You know, of course, I did have my, my ups and downs throughout the day. But I'm glad I did go and experience another city. I didn't think it was that drastically different than Lisbon, to be honest but I still appreciated the experience going and my Harry Potter tour ended up being amazing like my tour guide was awesome you guys so it was it was a good day you know I'm glad to be back I'm exhausted so I'm gonna lay down um, I had just had a six inch sandwich from Subway it's crazy how I come out here and just eat a bunch of American franchise food like <laughs> what am I doing but tomorrow you guys I am thinking about taking a day trip to Sintra so Sintra is another city here in Portugal it's only about 40 minutes by bus from Lisbon here so much closer <laughs> so I think I'm gonna sleep in a little bit and then wake up and take a day trip to Sintra I hear that it gets pretty busy on Sundays um so I, I do want to try to leave a little bit early however I'm exhausted so I'm going to give myself the space to sleep in a little bit and kind of rejuvenate because I've really been on the go 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 since I've been here you know exploring and trying to maximize on my stay so the day trip to Sintra is tomorrow um, I am about to shower and go to sleep you guys because it's been a long day So be sure you guys tune into that day trip to Porto vlog to get all the scoop and tea about my day to Porto I will catch you guys tomorrow for Sintra All right guys, so that concludes my day trip to Sintra Sintra Portugal you guys I cannot tell a lie I really really enjoyed Sintra like more than Porto to be honest and it's crazy because people were telling me like legit sending me direct messages on Instagram and stuff like you got to go to Porto you got to go to Porto and I was like okay like I have to go to Porto you know and maybe obviously it might have been the whole mishap with the train and having to catch an Uber which if you guys didn't see be sure to check out the day trip to Porto vlog because I document all of that but there was quite a few mishaps with the travel and everything and I think that in general like Porto Porto really to me didn't offer anything more than what I've already been doing in Lisbon so therefore to do a three-hour train ride there and stuff like don't get me wrong it's a beautiful city and the caveat to all of that is that I didn't have a lot of time there right like after accounting for the travel time I only had about four hours in the city so I'm sure that there's so much more that I could have done had I been staying there for like two days or something right um I liked it don't get me wrong and I definitely am glad I went it was worth it it just wasn't significantly different enough for me to be like oh okay I I truly understand why I needed to come here you know um but all that to say I think I would have had a different perspective had I had more time in the city however today Centra, Centra, you guys, 
I love Sintra and maybe I'm also biased because I just watched this Netflix series called The Witcher and this ironically enough the city that one of the kingdoms is based in is called Sintra that'd be crazy if it was actually based in Portugal I don't think so but anyway it is literally such a beautiful city town village whatever it's called it's kind of small so it's probably a town uh, but it is so beautiful you guys and I I've seen a lot of beautiful buildings and architecture here in Portugal but Sintra was just like different it also had a lot of great like hikes and trails and you could move there like I've been moving all through Portugal but today I was like whoa like this is serious Ca like climbing mountainsides to get up to castles and stuff so just so beautiful make sure you guys check out the vlog about my day trip to Sintra um where I kind of go through all of the day in more detail because it's just a lot but it was a great time like I loved it and I had just as many problems with trains and everything that I had in Porto but today I still felt like so good being there and still came home like I loved that place where I was Porto I was like whatever you know like it just so I I knew in my heart that that I like really enjoyed my day in Sintra so all that to say it was an awesome day you guys I'm gonna shower and go to sleep I have a COVID test in the morning in order to get back into the states fingers crossed that it's negative um and then I'm just gonna hang out tomorrow and kind of just enjoy my last full day in Portugal um tie up some loose ends as far as travel goes make sure all my documents and ducks are in a row and everything and then head back to New Jersey way I can't believe seven eight days have already gone by like that's crazy but I've loved my entire time here so we will recap tomorrow and finish out this vlog strong so i'll see you guys in the morning good morning friends so it is our last day in portugal so i'm headed right now to the square the rocio square well it's actually the restauradoras square it's the next metro station up but all still in the same vicinity i am headed there to get my covid test so i need either an antigen or a pcr test to get back into the united states um, so i have to get that within one day of leaving so leaves a very small window to get your covid test when you're traveling internationally Nationally, so please 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 make sure you are on top of your your stuff your COVID testing restrictions and measures and that you schedule it or go somewhere you know you're aware of the area you'll be in and their COVID testing procedures how much it costs etc etc so I found a little COVID testing pod as I was just literally walking and exploring around the city and it had a QR code on it so I just scanned that and scheduled an appointment for this morning in advance so that I knew I had it on the books. I'm really not sure of the details of it because the website was in Portuguese and the English was very limited. So we'll see when we get there as far as like how much it costs and how I get the results and all of that stuff. Okay, so here's a pod in the Rocio Square. This is actually not the one I booked at, but this is closer. So I'm gonna see if I can do like a walk-in here. All right guys, so I just booked and paid for an appointment online. It was 25 euros, so now I'm gonna walk into the pod and hopefully they have my appointment. Is everything correct? Yes, and I can get the printed out copy, right? Okay. You get the results in one hour by email as well, right? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Well done. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, have a nice day. You too. You go out here? Yeah. Thank you. Email, okay? Awesome. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Have a nice day. They got up there, you guys. <laughs> they got up there. Woo. Okay, I'm glad it's done now. So just wait for the results. Hopefully they are negative. Although I wouldn't mind staying, I do have to go back. I have classes starting again soon in a week or so, so I can't stay on vacation forever. I'll do this one. Can I do this? The, the coffee? With milk? Yes. And orange juice? 
Okay, and that's bacon, right? Yes. Yes, okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, guys, so I found a little place, and I think I'm just gonna get this breakfast right here, bacon, eggs, some toast, some coffee, some juice. It's only 890 euros, so that's probably about like 10 US dollars, and the best part is that it's right in front of this, the Elevador Gusta, or whatever it's called, one of the main attractions here in Lisbon, so. What better views, you know? Here we are, side street. So, views, views. What better way to have breakfast on my last full day in Portugal? Thank you so much. Right. Yes. This is a real breakfast, you guys. Now this is what I am used to. We got some eggs, we got some toast, we got some bacon, coffee, juice, views. Love it. All right guys, the email just came for my COVID test. So let's open that. Ooh. Gotta get home, gotta get home. Not that I want to leave, but okay, let's see. Oh, come on, is it in English? Negativo, I know enough to know. Okay, yeah, it says COVID-19 antigen rapid test SARS CoV-2 negative. Negativo, negative. Nasopharyngeal, awesome. It gives all my information on the PDF. So it gives um, my passport number, my date of birth, all of that because that needs to align when I submit it to the airline. You know, there's someone on the back end verifying that information and matching up that it's my identity with the test results so now that I have the PDF what I will do is send it to the airline like fill it out on the app um, submit my passport information my COVID test now and all of that to verify and they will make me travel ready and then once I'm travel ready then I can check into my flight and like download my boarding pass and all of that so the COVID test really needs to be done as soon as you can whenever you're safely in that window so that you can check into your flight you do not want to end up at the airport and you still don't have you know all of your documents in line because it's just a recipe for disaster so make sure as soon as you're in that window for the COVID test that you go and get it so that you have this document that you can start checking into your flight and doing all of those things okay so just to verify yes. which documents do I need okay have you already checked it on the Lufthansa travel regulation the combined attestation for coming back in the U.S. since you will be going back in the U.S. Yes, I checked on the website. However, I'm, it's just very confusing to figure out like what is the the requirements because there's like the non-risk versus high-risk areas, and then it's like the the test and the vaccination cancel each other out. So it was just it was very confusing for me to follow. So I have the antigen test. I also have my records of vaccination. I also have my records of COVID recovery. So and I have like my US combined passenger disclosure. So I have all the paperwork. I just wanna make sure that I'm going to be able to get home because the flight is in the morning and I'm not hearing back from the airline that my documents are approved. So that's why I'm calling. I don't know why I waved, like he could see me. You guys, oh my gosh, this is stressing me out. Like this is stressing me out, the whole COVID regulation. So I thought I had it all, a handle on it all. I went to get my COVID test this morning. You know, I'm all good. I go to check in on the Lufthansa website to check in for my flight in the morning. And it's saying that my COVID results are not valid and it's like it gave me this error message that's like oh please check the date of your test the kind of test and like all of those things because it's not registering that this is the the test that you need in order to get into germany so then i'm like wait hold on hold on so to back up you guys my flight is from lisbon to frankfurt germany and then from frankfurt to newark new jersey so i have that layover it's only like an hour in frankfurt i have to abide by the covid regulations for entering the united states as well as entering frankfurt germany so it's like i have to just handle all of this information of what do I need to get into Germany what do I need to get into the States making sure I have printed out documents of all of those things because it says make sure you're able to provide it a printed out copy so I'm stressed out you guys because it's like 
it's saying that like basically it may not come back approved in time so just come to the airport and present all of your documents at the airport and that's just cutting it too close for comfort for me this has not been a very user-friendly experience with Lufthansa and I'm not appreciating it because I don't want this extra stress during my last full day in Portugal so not very happy I'm not happy at all so I'm gonna try to relax and enjoy the rest of this day and let that be that and hopefully deal with it at the airport tomorrow if I my flight is at 5 a.m. which means I'm gonna have to leave here at like 3 a.m. to feel comfortable so it's gonna be an early morning I'll probably just uber so I am going to just take a minute do a little 30 minute nap rejuvenation because I'm a little annoyed and then we'll wake up and enjoy the rest of this afternoon and evening in Portugal so let me circle back to you guys in a little while hi <laughs> Oh, oh god <laughs> no <laughs> he just shot me with an arrow you guys freaking cupid I'm not picking up that damn arrow okay you guys so it is the last night in portugal the last few hours that i have here so i decided to book another airbnb experience and i am going to do a sunset boat tour i've been eyeing up this experience on airbnb for the last few days and i figure what better way to end my time here in portugal than really getting some great views seeing along the river we're gonna go along kind of the area where i did some sightseeing the other day like that belem tower museum area so that's where i'm headed i'm headed to the dock at the belem tower to catch the boat so I have about 20 minutes to get there. I'm gonna jump on a scooter because if you guys remember, that area is like five or six, seven miles away or something like that. So quickest way to get there, I'm gonna jump on a scooter. So see you guys at the dock. back on my scooter that boat tour was amazing you guys so I'm gonna get back to my hotel and then I'm gonna chat with you guys Whew, that ride was cold you guys so it was five miles total 26 minutes and it was six dollars and 20 cents in euros so that's probably like eight dollars maybe seven dollars or so so clearly one of the most affordable ways to get around you guys going there my scooter was so slow i almost missed the damn boat so that is the one lesson throughout this entire portugal trip is make sure you're on time for your travels make sure you're accounting for your forms of transportation the mishaps that happen inherently when traveling so just be sure you account for that and give yourself time all right guys i finally came down to eat in the restaurant in my hotel so my last night and of course i'm eating here gonna use my coupon some chicken parmesan these are potatoes so give it a go how cheesy this is oh you guys that sunset tour was everything like everything i am so glad that i decided to do it because i almost didn't the whole airline stuff had me stressed out about you know whether or not i'm going to be able to leave tomorrow or if i'm going to be stranded in portugal but i'm glad i kind of just relaxed for a second went on airbnb experiences and booked it because it was like the highlight of like i don't want to say the entire trip but it definitely was the highlight of today and a great you know cherry on top to an awesome trip so glad i did it you know we went all along the riverside here of like lisbon and saw all of the things that i've been seeing you know 
pretty much every day. But seeing them from the river and the water was just such a different view and so beautiful like seeing the 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 city side you know like the side of the city from the water seeing all of the monuments and stuff that i you know spent days walking and scootering through so it was just awesome and then the sunset what that sunset the pilot well no i guess he's not a pilot the um captain he was saying that that was one of the nicest sunsets that he had seen in a while. And I was like, of course it is, you know, like I'm on it. So it was just amazing, you guys. And it was only $28 on Airbnb experiences. Like if you have never used Airbnb experiences, guys, do yourself a favor and start booking excursions and things like that through Airbnb. If you're already using it for the Airbnb housing, it's super, super convenient. And even if you haven't used Airbnb before, check it out. So it was a great experience. The boat was really nice. It does get a little bit chilly on the water. So definitely make sure you're bringing a jacket or a blanket or something. Um, but overall, a hundred thousand million percent recommend you guys so i am going to put all of the attractions i visited in portugal not only in lisbon but in porto and Sintra, as well as my airbnb experiences i'm going to include them all in the description box below so be sure you guys check those out if you enjoyed any of the attractions i went to today if you want to know the names and start building out your itinerary like it's really helpful to know the names of those attractions as well as the tours the airbnb experiences themselves you guys, they made my experience. Vinny and Porto and Pedro here, my captain on the sunset tour. It was just the the cherries, multiple cherries on top of an already amazing vacation here in Portugal. So if you're ever in the area and you're looking for something to do with, an, with a native or someone who knows the area really well, definitely check out their Airbnb experiences. Dinner was also pretty good. I had shrimp cocktail for an appetizer and chicken parmesan for my entree. So I ate down in the restaurant here at the hotel. So I finally used my 20% off discount. Um, so that was convenient. But I'm really, you know, I'm feeling very filled, you guys. Like very fulfilled with this trip. I feel like I had enough time here to do pretty much everything I wanted with the exception of if I had more time and it was warmer more so I would have went down South Portugal to like an area called Faro or Algarve I think it's called they have amazing beautiful beaches and that's something I would do if I came back at a warmer time of year because I didn't want to go down there just for pictures or just for the views and not get to like swim in the amazing beaches, you know? So that's something, if anything, that I feel like I didn't get to do while I was here on this trip. Um, but overall, I feel so fulfilled, so you know just happy and content with how this trip turned out i feel like i had sufficient time to do everything and see everything that i wanted i never really felt rushed during my time here because i knew i had plenty of it of course there were some ups and downs with travel and you know bumps in the road that i hit during this trip but overall it was like I felt very chill, you know, very relaxed, very just going with the flow here and I love that. So I'll do a more thorough recap tomorrow, but I am going to get some rest because I leave here at about 2.45 or 3 a.m. to catch this 5 a.m. flight, which hopefully I can get on and that I have all the documentation. So I will catch up with you guys in the morning for our departure flight and you know, my overall recap. So see you guys tomorrow. All right, you guys, so it is about three o'clock in the morning. I'm headed to the airport. I just checked out. My hotel gave me a breakfast box, you guys, to go to the airport because they knew that I wasn't gonna be able to make breakfast this morning. Super nice. As you guys can see, it is like a dead zone out here. There is absolutely no one here on the streets. It said that an Uber was like three minutes away. It's only like eight euros or something to the airport. The metro is not running right now. So very limited options as far as my transportation to the airport. So Uber seems affordable and quick since there's no traffic right now. So that's why I'm just gonna Uber. Well, 
then you guys, this is quite a line to check in. I'm glad I'm here two hours early. I thought it would be empty at 3 a.m. but guess not. I'm going home y'all. <laughs> I really just needed my COVID test. They just checked my COVID test, my passport, and the U.S. form. There's like a U.S attestation form or something you have to fill out to re-enter the united states so i'm all clear you guys all right friends so as you guys can see i am back home and unfortunately like most amazing things in life my trip to portugal has come to an end so as i close out this vlog i just wanted to recap my trip and give you guys some high yield most important takeaway points from my amazing week in portugal so first and foremost, Portugal was by far one of my most favorite trips to date. You guys, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful country. There is something for everyone. Whether or not you want to just rest and relax and rejuvenate, you can completely chill and just take in the scenery and you know the beauty, go to the beach, do whatever you want. If you are an adventurer, you can Oh my gosh, do anything you want. Hike the mountains and the palaces and castles of Sintra. You can explore the history and rich culture in Lisbon. You can go to Porto. You can visit so many different amazing cities in Portugal via train. It, there's just so much to do, you guys. If you are a surfer, there's amazing, beautiful beaches. So all of that to say, there is something for you in Portugal. There is also an overwhelming amount of free and or affordable and reasonably priced things to do in Portugal. There were some days in which I spent absolutely no money just by going around the city and going to different attractions and just exploring because a lot of things in Portugal, just in the city-wise attractions, sightseeing, don't cost anything. So if you are traveling on a budget but you also want to see things and go out and explore and do things, Portugal and Lisbon in particular was amazing for that. And overall, Portugal just had good vibes. The people were amazing, so nice, so hospitable, so friendly, so diverse. There are so many diverse populations in Portugal and it was just a beautiful sight to see that it's just an overwhelmingly tolerant and welcoming country. My second major point that I want to make is about solo travel. As I stated you guys, this was my first ever solo travel trip and I came into it very weary and cautious and really nervous about the whole thing, especially as a younger woman and you guys, go on that trip by yourself you know obviously be very very smart be very intentional about where you choose to go which country make sure it has a good reputation as far as solo travel goes and that there's a good community there that has experienced solo travel in that country firsthand and can attest to the safety in particular um, the hospitality of the country and all of those things that make you confident that it's a place that you would like to go alone. Also, if you are a person like me that is more like extroverted and really just a people person and you're concerned about the aspect of solo travel just because it seems as though it might get lonely, you guys, just because you're traveling solo does not mean you are alone or that you will be lonely. I encountered so many different people in Portugal, met so many different people, had amazing conversations, spent the entire days in tours with individuals that were also traveling, whether or not they were alone or you know families or couples or whatever, and you just don't have to be alone. So don't let that fear of being lonely prevent you from going on an amazing trip and meeting amazing individuals along the way. And I'm going to do a completely separate video on my thoughts on solo travel and tips and recommendations and things like that. But overall, just be smart, you guys. Keep your eyes open like anything in life. You know, have a little street smarts about you and just be aware at all times of yourself and your surroundings and, you know, just be very smart no matter where you go, whether it's a safe country or not. You could be a target anywhere, so just be smart. And you might have to dish out a little bit more money to stay at a nicer hotel in a nicer neighborhood or something, but your safety is of the utmost importance, especially when you are by yourself. So all of that to say, stay tuned for my video on solo travel and my tips and recommendations, but I 100 out of 10 recommend solo travel. I had an amazing experience in Portugal. 
And my third and final point about my trip to Portugal is cost. I know how important cost is when we're traveling and we're making plans and itineraries and things like that. So I like to be as transparent as possible so you guys know what it took for me to do all of the things that you saw in this vlog. So I booked my hotel and flight together via a package deal on Expedia. So my hotel, B Hotel Lisboa, was a seven night stay. And my round trip flight from Newark to Lisboa and Lisboa to Frankfurt to Newark um, was a total of $1,280. $89. So my breakfast was included at the hotel as you guys saw in this vlog. However, all of the rest of my food was out of pocket expenses for me. So my food total for my entire week stay in Portugal was $272.50. Food was by far my most significant expense on this trip. All of the transportation that you saw throughout this vlog, so that includes the Ubers, the metros, the train to and from Porto, as well as the bird scooters that I use, totaled $196. So $196 seems pretty high and it is. However, 60% of it or $120 of it came from that round trip ticket to Porto on Rail Ninja. And as I mentioned in this vlog, you guys, I got screwed with that ticket. It was so overpriced because I booked through Rail Ninja, which is a third party. So do your due diligence. Make sure you're getting the cheapest and most legitimate prices for your transportation if you're taking the high speed trains in Portugal. So definitely book direct if you can on the website the Portugal train website. And my last category was like tourism and attractions and kind of like experiences, sightseeing, stuff like that, which totaled $253. So this includes my ticket or entry fees to any of the attractions that I went to, any shopping or souvenirs that I did. It also includes my Airbnb experiences that I booked, as well as my 25 euro cost COVID test. So between my food, transportation, and my tourism expenses, that totaled $722, which leaves me with a grand total of approximately $2,011 for my seven night, eight day stay in Portugal. When I first crunched these numbers, I was like, damn, you know, this is kind of expensive. Like where could you have cut costs or not spent so much money? Because Julia, this is kind of a lot, you know, $2,000. But then I realized seven nights is a long time, you guys. Like I felt like I did a lot and saw a lot in Portugal. It's also European countries aren't typically known as being the most affordable or cheapest countries compared to other parts of the world. So it was very comparable to the United States as far as some of my expenses. And of course I could have you know went to a cheaper restaurant or did this or did that or not did this or not did that however I loved my trip to Portugal you guys and it made it very easy that they take card at a lot of places you know so I was able to just swipe my card swipe my card use my credit card um, instead of converting my cash over to euros and being stuck with a bunch of euros so I did have $90 in euros that I spent that was accounted for in this that I used for tipping and just, you know, quick little money things, but I overwhelmingly used my card for most of my expenses in Portugal, which made it very convenient. But overall, I thought that the trip was pretty affordably priced for how much I did, you guys. You saw so much in this vlog and I did so much more, you know, that you maybe didn't get to see. So seven days of a lot of great experiences in Portugal was well worth the money that I spent. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I really truly enjoyed my, my week in Portugal. It was amazing to see Lisbon and Porto and Sintra and all of the beauty that Portugal has to offer. Obrigado to Portugal for having me and showing me so much hospitality. I sincerely appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Give this video a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed hanging out for the week with me in Portugal. Be sure you're subscribed so you're tuned into all my future travels. Hit that notification bell so you are never late to the party. And as always, I love you family. Stay safe, stay well, and I will see you next time.